first three only. Oh, yeah. Okay. What can I give to them? Gathering music. He's not going to be here on the 22nd either. So he isn't going to be here. Because yeah, we're both not going to be here. He mentioned it the other night. Taking Brenda back to school. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's. Uh,
Arise, shine, your light has come. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Good morning and welcome to worship at St. Andrews on this Epiphany Sunday. If you are joining us online, find at least one candle if you can and light it remembering that God is with you right where you are. And if you're here in the sanctuary, I invite you to take the friendship register, sign them, pass them around. And if there is any prayer that is on your heart in this day, please take a yellow prayer card and fill that out. And the ushers will bring that forward for you during the first song. Today, both Sunday school and youth group resume. So Sunday school for the children and one adult class was at 9. The adult class at 11 o'clock will resume next week. Where's Rick? Next week. Thank you, Rick. We are after worship. If you have a few minutes, we are taking down many of the Christmas decorations as we end Christmas tide. So if you have a few minutes to stay and help us with that, it would be most appreciated. So youth group resumes this afternoon. Um, 3.30, the youth singers and ringers will be in the choir room. And then both youth groups, first and fifth grade and sixth and twelfth grade, meet from four to six. If you want to know exactly where, talk to Rob. As we look ahead a little bit into January, on Sunday, January 22nd, we have our annual congregational meeting after worship to hear reports, to vote on some bylaw changes this year, and to elect one officer. Annual reports will be available next week. The financials may not be available until the 22nd, so we will have the reports ready for you next week. Any other announcements for today? Did I get it? All right, then let us stand together and call on the name of the Lord. God of Advent, of waiting and hoping, keep our hearts expectant, ready for your coming among us. God of Christmas, of celebration and rejoicing, make our hearts glad with the joy nothing can take from us. God of Epiphany, of hiding and making known, fill our hearts with wonder at the revelation of your glory that we have seen in Christ our Lord. Amen. the press. 
Trusting in the power of Christ and remembering the grace and mercy of Christ, let us come and lift up our prayers of confession. Let us pray. O God, our guide, who once used a star to lead people to Christ, we confess our poor sense of direction. We let ourselves become confused, easily distracted, and lose our way. We fail to follow the signs you provide. Forgive our waywardness, O oh God. Lead us to the Christ so that we may follow his way to you. In John chapter 1, we hear the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. To all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children of God, know that in Jesus Christ you are forgiven in this day and each day you turn back to God. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us pass the peace to one another. The children are welcome to come forward. Good morning, guys. Good morning. All right, so we've been going through the nativity for a bit, and it's finally assembled, right? Yay. Yeah? Are you sure about that? No. The angel. No? The angel's hiding in the back. Sorry. <laughs> See? Angel. Ha. All right, who are we missing? The no, we have the shepherds. Who are we missing? The wise men. The wise men. That's right. Would you guys like to go get the wise men? Yeah. Do you remember where you put them? Yeah. Okay. Well, if you go back that way. 
They're in the back pew. No, 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 not the sound guys. Leave them. Yeah, we need them. So we have a camel. Do we have any wise men? It is a giant camel. Camels are big, though. All right. Thank you, Grace. There's one more? Should be two more, but okay. And now, here we go. Thank you, guys. We have our wise men. But our nativity is now done. Isn't that great? Yeah. Yeah, and it's the last day that we can say Merry Christmas. There you go. You guys got it. So, with it being the last day of Merry Christmas and our wise men have finally arrived, what happens to our nativity now? It gets what? It gets put away. Yeah, kind of sad that Christmas is over, isn't it? But you know what a great part of what's going to happen today is? Did you guys notice that table over there? And there are a whole bunch of words on it. In a little bit, you guys are going to be invited with everyone else to come up and get a word. And that word isn't just a word to walk with in the year. It's a reminder that, you know, the wise men came and then left the nativity, going out into the world, telling about what they saw. And so we might put our Christmas decorations away. We might put our nativities away. But in our hearts, we can carry the joy of Christmas and share it throughout the world, starting today. So, with that, with everything going away, get a word today and remember to carry Christmas in your heart. That is Jesus Christ born to us in this world every day. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the gift of the nativity and how you invite us to carry it out into the world with us. I ask that in this year we would carry it far and wide as the wise men did, sharing your love and joy in Christ born to us. I praise you and thank you in Christ's name. Amen. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. God of Epiphany, we long to hear your holy word in fresh ways. Open our ears to the call of your voice. Open our eyes to the dawning of a new day. Fill us with anticipation for your future. Amen. This morning's first lesson is Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the people. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around, They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God.
Just the chorus of that, Star of Wonder, is a favorite lullaby at our house. Don't tell my kids there's five verses. <laughs> chorus is perfect. Our second reading today is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Let us listen for God's word that is for us in this day. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Wise men from the east came. They came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Tiffany points us towards the star that was so high in the sky and yet pointed straight to Christ. Some years at Epiphany, as we start the new year, we are offered an opportunity to receive a word, often called an epiphany or a star word. Don't hold me to just one name. I can't do it. The first time I received a word, it was perfect. It seemed divinely perfect. It was the word believe in a time where I was struggling with a bit of doubt. And then the year I got married, and the year we welcomed our first child, my word again seemed perfect. Celebrate. And you know what? In the midst of all the transition, I did need to be reminded to celebrate. Anyone ever had an epiphany word that just fit beautifully? All right wonderful and it's so wonderful when it fits really well but then going into 2020 was actually the last time we had star words together and i received the word manifest and i failed i could not connect to this word and i failed to find god through this word and i'm sure there was and is some value in it Yet with all that happened in 2020, my epiphany word eluded me. Anyone had an epiphany word that led you nowhere? I'm going to go by this, that I'm not alone. It's good to know I'm not alone. And yet in the failing, in having a few years without epiphany words, I offer the practice again in a new and maybe a broader way. But before we get to that, let's go back to the scripture and to our inspiration for this practice to the wise men from the east. So they show up. They show up in Jerusalem, these foreigners asking where the king of the Jews was to be born. King Herod has lots of reaction in, in this. Certainly at least one was surprised because, I mean, what did he think he was? He was the king, right? 
and someone shows up and says, where's the king been born? A little bit startling. So we have this question that we can seek answers, but there's a little bit of mystery in it. How did the wise men know this from a star? So N.T. Wright, the New Testament scholar, shares one of the theories. Around 7 BC, Jupiter and Saturn were in alignment at least three times. And in those times that they're in close proximity, it looks like one bright spot in our night sky. Now, this theory is even more convincing when one realizes that in those days, Jupiter was considered the royal planet, and Saturn was linked to the Jewish people. So if they come together, a royal Jewish king makes sense. So for those who studied the stars, a new king of the Jews was written there. And right here, I'm reminded that life and creation can point us to God in so many ways. And here we see that astronomy and astrology that so often lean towards other spiritual traditions at least once were used by God to point to the divine. Liddy Barlow writes a reflection entitled, The Magi's Inner Faith Encounter. And she expands on this experience and gives possible ways to live into the wise men's example as we seek God. But before we get into her suggestions, I want to start naming that they were seeking. They didn't just sit there and wait to see if God would show up. They got up and they went, and they went on this journey and found more than they imagined. Later in Matthew, we hear Jesus say, seek and you will find. And we're not afraid to seek signs and to follow that bright spot in the sky that led them to God. So Reverend Barlow picks up, naming that the wise men, they cross boundaries. She writes, the Magi didn't wait for the newborn king to find them. Instead, they actively searched, they disrupted their lives, and they took the initiative. So what if this year, in the midst of our lives, we were the ones who made that first phone call or sent that email to start a conversation what if we were the ones who stood up and started actively living our faith and trying new ways to connect to God? What if we didn't just sit and wait for direction? One possibility for the year. The next thing we find is that the wise men were curious. I love that quote, be curious, not judgmental. Anyone out there know where that comes from? All right. If you haven't watched Ted Lasso, have someone else recommend it to you. <laughs> You'll know why when you watch it. Centuries ago, the wise men fit into this. The Hebrew scriptures, they didn't know them. They didn't know them at all. So they went and they asked those who did, and they said, what can you tell us? How can we use this to find more and to understand more? They weren't afraid to ask people in another tradition they weren't afraid to receive truth from another tradition and find that it led them to God. But what if we were curious in this year, more and more curious to intentionally ask questions and looking for new things to learn and living with an open curiosity? So next, they arrive and they find Jesus in Bethlehem. And here, the phrase I love is they recognized the divine. They come in and they see Mary and Jesus and they kneel down and pay him homage. We see that they went to the king. It never says they knelt down to Herod. But here, this child, they see the divine and they kneel down. It reminds me how... Genesis talks about the creation of humanity and how all humanity was made in the image of God. What if we truly went into this year looking at each person, at each one we encounter, and looking for Christ in them and hoping that they see Christ in us, living into that call to be the very image of God? What value could we find that could be so easily overlooked. 
There is also that example of risk and a bit of discernment. Herod told them to go back, and they have a dream, and they go another way. The very ones who showed them the scriptures and told them where to find what they were seeking also asked them to come back. Yet they discerned that the request was out of fear and out of a desire to hold power and control, and they go another way taking that risk to find another path home when they are so far from where they started. I think this is difficult in our world today. How might we discern where God is working and where people are claiming to hold God as they hold on to power? It has to be more and more about God and less and less about us and trying to hold on to power. And so we have these guideposts offered to us by the wise men of crossing boundaries, of being curious, of seeing the divine in others, of discernment and a little risk. They can guide us as we receive or as we choose an epiphany word. In years past, I have often chosen that you blindly pick a word and let the spirit use it however the spirit may. Maybe this is the right approach for you. It has often been a wonderful approach. Or, this is where the broadening comes when you're like, I cannot connect to that word. Which happens. If you get a word you really can't connect to, we will have extras in the office and you can get another one. There is always grace in the midst. But you can come up and just choose a word and see what it is and where the spirit might lead you to. God with it, or you could come to this table, just look at the words and see if one jumps out at you, if it sort of pulls you back and take that word and see where God is leading it for more like a Lectio Divina type experience. Or maybe you already know your word. Sometimes people come into a new year and they know the word they need to work on for the year or something to guide them. And there are blank cards here at the back of the table and pens, and you could write it down, claiming not only that this is your word for the year, but also this is a place you are going to prayerfully invite God in to lead you, to help guide you, to help you know God more in the midst of your year. So three options. Come up and just take a word and walk away and see what it is. Look at the table, wait for a word to jump out at you. Or in the back, there's some blank cards. Write a word if you already know. Choose as you are led. But as you take an epiphany word, may all of us be led to seek God more. As Rob talked about putting the nativity away, the wise men can continue to lead us back to Christ again and again with this epiphany word to remind us. Now, if you are worshiping online today, you are welcome to come by the office and receive an Epiphany card. Send us an email. We'll be happy to put a card in the mail to you. Or if you do know your word, just take a card and write it down on there. But find a way to have a word to lead you to God in this year. If you are here and it's best for you to stay in your seat, ask an usher to bring you a basket with some cards in it for you to choose from or also to write one. Many options in this, but in the midst of all of it, this is a practice we're offered, a practice to let epiphany guide us, to let the Spirit help us be more open to God in this world, to be more open to where God is leading us in this life. And to take that courageous step to say, yes, this journey of faith goes on. And like the wise men, let us seek it. So people of God, may we go into this year diligently seeking God, open and curious, ready to give and ready to receive the presence of God. And so as Jonathan leads us in Waymaker, which is our song of reflection, You're invited to come when you are ready to choose a word, to receive a word, and to seek God to lead you through it this year.
Would you pray with me? Holy God, may you guide us, not just today, but every day. Maybe you could even lead us through a word and through your spirit that is with us always. May we go into this year seeking as the wise men with Christ before us and behind us, Christ above us, and Christ within us. Amen.
Please join me as we read together the affirmation of faith using the words in your bulletin or on the screens. The same spirit who inspired the prophets and apostles rules our faith and life in Christ through scripture, engages us through the word proclaimed, claims us in the waters of baptism, feeds us with the bread of life, of salvation and calls women and men to all ministries of the church in gratitude to God empowered by the spirit we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth praying come Lord Jesus seated. The time of the service has come where we present our offerings, and I have the honor of being the first liturgist in almost two years who can say the ushers will come forward to collect our offerings. Now, you may also give online or by text, and also remember you can also give of your time and talents. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Bright morning star, 
your light has come, and your birth, O Jesus, has overwhelmed us with joy. Like the Magi of long ago, may we be drawn to you and offer you such gifts as we are able. Amen.
Let us join our hearts together in prayer. Lord, I thank you for this new year that we are walking into. I ask that your word would be found in our hearts and that we would carry you out into this world singing praise for all that you have done, are doing, and will do in this day and in this year to come. We ask that you would hear our prayers, spoken and unspoken, and that we would walk in prayer, trusting in you, seeking what you are doing, and seeking your heart for this world. Lord, we lift up Bill Callball. We thank you for his continued recovery, and we ask that you would strengthen him, guide his steps, and just place your healing hand upon him. Lord, we also lift up Carl and Theus Grice. We thank you for their recoveries in this weekend. We ask for your continued guidance for the medical staff around them, that they would be strengthened and their recovery would be a glory to you. Lord, we lift up Astrid. We ask that you would give peace and direction in this time and moment of life and that you would be revealed in all things and that your hand would guide those who are in need. And Lord, we ask that you would ease the minds of all of us in our worries and in all of the worries that seek to surround and drown us in this week. We lift them up to you, knowing that you are the God of peace. You are the God who calms the storms. You are the God who speaks words into our lives. Bring peace in this year. We thank you and praise you, and we pray as your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
people of God go out into this world today and every day, seeking God with openness and curiosity and letting God speak to you in signs wherever they may come. As you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Alleluia. Amen. Amen.